All right, welcome everyone to our next presentation. Mike Turner is President and Chief Portfolio Manager of Turner Capital Investments, LLC, and has a strong financial, mathematical, computer science, and engineering background. Mike takes a disciplined, rules-based approach to trading through his use of his unique market directional investment methodology. Today, Mike is discussing how to build a portfolio designed to generate huge returns in both bull and bear markets. Mike, I pass the baton to you, sir. Thank you, Rena. Hello, folks. So it's a delight to be with you today. I'm going to get right into uh, the presentation. Let me get that started. Tell you a little bit about who we are. I won't spend much time on this slide at all. Uh, we're a registered investment advisor. Uh, advisory. We've got a little over 700 client accounts, about 350 clients. We've got four model portfolios. You can read more about those uh, on our website at turnercapital.com. Everything we do is in a managed account structure. We don't do uh, combined funds or mutual funds or anything like that. Uh, everything is managed individually for each individual client, but you have to follow one of our four models or more. Uh, we manage both qualified and non-qualified funds. Uh, the client accounts are custody at TD Ameritrade Institutional. The minimum family aggregate account size is 250,000. And the management fee ranges from 1% to 2%, depending on the aggregate account size that you have. Um, in a nutshell, if, uh, uh, if, we, if you do end up with an account size that's less than 250, because we do allow that in certain circumstances, uh, the rate would be 2% between, uh, between 250 and a million, it's uh, one and a half. Between a million and three million, it's one and a quarter. And three million and above is uh, 1%. Uh, we use a rules-based quantitative analysis for trading. And we're bullish in bull cycles and bearish in bear cycles. Okay, let's get into it. I'm going to put this in kind of a juxt juxtaposition uh, analysis of kind of the approach that we take and I'm going to try to teach you, by the way, exactly what we do. Uh, you don't have to hire us to uh, manage your money to, to get a lot of benefit out of this presentation. I'm going to take you through exactly the methodology that we use. And indeed, uh, at the end of the presentation, you can go to our website and sign up for my weekly uh, client letter. And you'll be able to get that for free. We don't try to sell you anything. It's just getting the client letter. And it's going to have some information in it that I'm going to talk about in uh, this presentation that I think will really help you. First of all, most financial advisors are trained as marketing and sales managers. They're really not money managers. They're not incented to trade. They're paid for AUM, assets under management, and not paid for return on AUM. They're paid for AUM. They cannot move to cash without losing kickbacks from mutual funds and uh, various types of um, third-party investments that pay them a big commission but only if they keep their money in play. And they make way more money on bonuses and kickbacks from mutual funds and alternative investments than they do on, on your management fees. Uh, they follow the modern portfolio theory, which totally ignores potentially massive losses in bear markets. Yes, it's an accepted methodology. And that's one of the reasons that they use it. They don't want to get sued by having some... Um, different kind of methodology and the client doesn't like it. And so they stick to something that they can defend in court. And it also has terrible downside um, capability or if uh, we move into a bear market. So keep that in mind. They assume that losing less in a bear market than, than the market is just part of the game. They're not incented to trade. They're not incented to grow capital in bear markets at all. If your advisor beats the market, by 20%, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Beat the market by 20% in the next 50% bear market, you are going to lose 40%. Think about that. Your advisor beat or you beat the market by 20% in a bear market, but you still lost 40%. This is why buy and hold can be so devastating to your financial life. This strategy that I'm gonna take you through is not for traditional financial advisors or traditional investing strategies. Did you know the following? The 29 to 32 crash, the market lost 84% of its value. I really kind of like going through this slide because I hear from, from folks who come on board who've been talking to their prior advisor and that prior advisor will say things to them like, like oh, you need to stay for the long haul. Bear markets don't last very long. Um, don't worry about bear markets. So I want to take you through this to kind of 
put this in perspective. So the market lost 84%. It took 30 years to recover, okay? The 66 to 82 bear market, the market lost 72%. It took 29 years to recover, okay? The 2000, 2002 bear market correction, market lost 37%, took 13 years to recover. And in that period of time, the 2007, 2009 bear market correction, the market lost 50% of its value and it took nearly six years to recover, okay? That's all inflation adjusted numbers. Now, what does that mean? The average loss, 60%. The average time to get back to even, 19 and a half years. So kind of keep this in mind. If the market drops 50% and you and your, your portfolio drops 50% in the next bear market, and then the market comes back at 10% per year thereafter, which is no small accomplishment. It takes you 7.2 years to get back to even. So ask yourself this question. How many 7.2 years do you have left to try to get back to even? And I don't care what your age is. You may be 90 or you can be 19. You don't want to throw away 7.2 years getting back to even. All right. One of these days, probably sooner than later, a bear market will hit your portfolio like a freight train. Buy and hold investments will be decimated. Your advisor will try to lose less than the market as then the market falls, goes down. Your advisor will tell you that you're in it for the long haul, as I mentioned before. Your advisor will tell you that only the weak hands go to cash. Going to cash will make you nothing. You probably do not have a bear market investment strategy designed to grow and substantially grow in a bear market. So the strategy that we use and we recommend that you use is that you want to grow your, your portfolio in a bull market. Everybody can do that. And you want to grow your portfolio in a bear market. Very few people can do that. I'm going to show you how. Here's some axioms of a successful investor. Not losing money is far more important than holding on during a bear market. Avoiding the lost time and lost gains and getting back to even is how real wealth is accumulated. Knowing when to sell is a key to long-term capital growth. Rule one, don't lose money. Rule two, never forget rule one. That's Warren Buffett. Uh, okay, knowing what to do and, and when to do it. So, you know, right now you're probably doing okay. You may be doing great. Um, there's a lot of folks out there particularly some of the big name uh, uh, investors, fi financial management firms that have lost a ton of money this year. It's been a tough year, but maybe you've done well. Maybe you put all your money into the SPY at the beginning of the year and you're up 22, 23% and you're a happy camper. But at the same time, you've had unlimited downside risk. So how do you, how do you take care of that unlimited downside risk, how do, you, how do you mitigate that or diminish that and still make money in a bull and a bear market? I'm gonna show you how to do it. First of all, quit guessing about the, what the market might do in the future. Oh, you turn on CNBC, you turn on uh, Fox Business. It doesn't matter. Read whatever financial uh, articles you wanna read. They're all talking about what's going to happen or likely to happen in the future. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. I want you to think about that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter with our methodology and our approach, what the market does this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next 10 years, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you why that's the case and how you could take advantage of that. Measure where the market is, not where it will be, and everybody can, can measure where the market is. It's just the data, you, it's already happened and know that the current trend in the market will continue exactly until it doesn't. And that's a mathematical fact. So how long will this current trend in the market, it's bull market, how long will it last? I know exactly how long it will last, and so do you. It will last until it doesn't. Now you may roll your eyes back and say, okay, now I understand that, that's kind of a stupid thing to say. No, it's not, it's profound. And, and why it's profound is that if you can measure when that doesn't has occurred, 
you'll know when to change your strategy from bull to neutral to bear. Understand how to measure overbought and oversold conditions in the market, sectors, and stocks. Always assume your best investment decision is wrong. Think about that. You go out, you do all your research, you listen to, to Jim Cramer, and you go buy whatever you're going to buy, and you do all the research on, on the fundamentals, which is supposed to make, you know, really, where you can make really good decisions, and you buy that particular stock, you basically fall in love with it, and suddenly it goes south on you, goes against you. What are you going to do? So you bought it this morning and now it's down 10% this afternoon. What are you going to do? It's down 20% tomorrow. What are you going to do? You need to have a plan of what to do when your investment decision is wrong. And we use stop losses for that. Another major key to successful investing in the stock market is to go to cash when risk gets too high. Don't be afraid to go to cash. I don't know of hardly any, there's a few, hardly any advisor, professional advisors that will let you go to cash. I, I've got one client who was telling me a story about their former advisor. And he said that he went to them and said, I want you to go to cash when the market gets to a certain point. And the advisor said to him, if we put you in cash, you have to leave. We don't manage anybody's account if it's in cash. Think about that. They want you at risk all the time, regardless of what the market's doing. It is not what or when you buy that makes you money. I know that's where you spend all your research. I know that's where you get together with your buddies and you say, look at this and look at that, and this is going to happen. You know, you're buying Tesla or you're shorting Tesla, you're buying Bitcoin or you're not, whatever it is that you think is going to be just going to the moon. And you spend a lot of time on that. And that's the almost the least important thing you can do in making money in the market. It's knowing when to sell. Knowing when to buy is easy. Knowing when to sell is hard. Avoiding a major loss can often be far more valuable than making a profit. Why? It just takes too dadgum long to recover from a big loss. Okay? Let the market tell you when to be a bull, a bear, or to be sitting on the sidelines. Quantitative analysis can put your investment strategies on the right side of the market at the right time. So here are five steps to successful investing. One, let the market determine your investment bias. Is the market bullish? Can you defend the fact that it's bullish? Is it overbought? Will it become oversold? But you want to be bullish in bull trending markets and bearish in bear trending markets. Do not try to be smarter than the market. Folks, the market's never wrong. I don't care what you hear on TV by the pundits out there. If they say that the market's just flat wrong, it's because they're wrong. If your investment isn't working out, it's because you're wrong, not the market. Don't try to be smarter than the market. The market is your oxygen that you, you breathe. Just take advantage of it. Let it tell you where it is. Invest accordingly. Measure risk. Never put more capital to work in the market than the potential downside risk. If you buy the SPY, it's been great this year. You buy the SPY at the beginning of the year, you're way up, okay? And you have unlimited risk unless you've got stops in place. Well, where are those stops going to be? How do you, how do you know how to calculate a stop loss? Well, I'm going to show you what we do and how we use it. Quantitatively measure the market trend and know with mathematical certainty whether the market is in a bullish, neutral, or bearish condition. And I give you a chart. I give all my clients and anybody else who wants it a chart every week that shows you where the market is every week. And it's free. Only buy high quality equities and ETFs, including inverse ETFs, early when you can where early is defined as moving from a bearish trend to a bullish trend. So when you see the market begin to change direction, it's been bullish, 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 and now it goes down enough. And I have indicators of which I share with, I can share with you if you want, every week in, in my client letter, it comes out every Monday morning. And I, I let my, my clients know that all of my subscribers know that whether or not the market is turning down turning up in, a, in an uptrend, in a downtrend, 
and by that you can know whether to try to get in early after a bottom or get out as early as you can when it tops. Okay. The 2020 market had little to no bifurcation. The market was overbought in early uh, February. We went to cash on February 20th. Why did we do that? Because the market was overbought. We raised our stops. The market wiggled down on the 20th, not about a one and a half percent, and it hit all of our stops and we went to cash. The market crashed, as you know, starting on February 24th. The market bottomed okay, in early February, April. We re-entered the market in mid-April. We moved to cash in September to avoid a 10% loss. We re-entered the market in early October. The best model we, ha we have was up over 40% in 2020. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future returns. And here's the chart. I'm gonna show you at the end of this presentation, the current one. This one's a little dated. It's, uh, oh, I guess, uh, May 24th. It doesn't matter, it's a concept that I wanna show you. This, um, orange line that you see here, it's really nothing more than a 200 day moving average of a composite of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow and the Russell 2000. And when the, this black line is just the market, okay? The 200 day is the 200 day of the market. This band that you see here, this yellow band, no, it's not a Bollinger band. This band is a one EM, one expected move, one standard deviation of normal volatility above and below that 200 day. It's a warning area, okay? And so what we uh, did in 20 was that uh, we went to cash, as I said, in early February. We got back in the market in uh, about the second week of April and got overbought again in um, September. We got out. We bought back in uh, just after that next move higher. And um, that's how we use the, the strategy. We watch where the market is in respect to um, uh, the, its trends. The Down here at the bottom, I don't have time to go through all this, but these are sectors. I know at a glance which sector is bullish and which sector is bearish, what the inverses look like, what the major indexes look like. All this tells me at a glance whether or not I should be all in or not in the market. I'm, now again, this is back in May of uh, 21, uh, and I'll show you the current one uh, here at the end of the presentation. 2021 is not 2020. I wish it were. We've had a great year in 2020. 2021 has been tougher. The market is highly bifurcated. We have con constant whipsaws. The NASDAQ dropped 10% in February and March while the S&P moved higher. The Russell 2000 has been teetering on becoming a, um, uh, a bear market index for months before booming higher here just recently. Risk of a bear market continues to grow. Discipline, volatility-based stop loss uh, warnings are critical to get out before major losses ensue. And we have done that. We are right, basically at this point in time running about two standard deviations below the most recent Friday close for our stops. What's the standard deviation? In our world, it's how much the market, based on a Black-Scholes formula, how much the market will move up or down 67% uh, of the time in the upcoming trading week. And we calculate what that is, and then we will base our stop losses off of that. When we're in a bullish, strongly bullish moving market, we tend to be about two standard deviations below the Friday close. Why the Friday close? It's just a point in time. Sometimes we'll change it midweek. Sometimes we'll change the stop only raising them multiple times a day if the market's just going crazy up and we're getting close to becoming overbought. We're a long ways away from being overbought right now. We move to inverse ETFs in bear markets. And I'm gonna explain that too. So have a strategy for bull and bear markets. Try to have a bullish investment bias in bull trending markets. You see those green circles there? That's just, this is when you wanna have a bull, uh, Bias. That means you're wanting to buy, you're wanting to have, put all your money to work, keep it invested. But as you will, as you know, notice, let me back up here and show this to you. In um, this area right here, let me get that going and, it's, and it'll draw it. Uh, notice it goes up and it gets to a point right here where it was overbought. This is where we raised our stops. 
We got out right there, not at the top. We got out a little bit after the top. We didn't get back in at the bottom. We got back in after the bottom. So we wait for the market to tell us what it is doing, okay? Avoid buying and, and, hold on more, and hold more on the cash in weak and bear trending markets, okay? And the market will tell you where it is. The sectors will tell you where they are. Don't try to outguess the market, okay? So all those red circles are where you wanna go to cash, raise your stops, that sort of thing. And again, the market's telling you where it is. You're not having a guess about it. It tells you where it is, okay? Now the Fed comes into play. It buys um, about 80 billion in US treasuries each month, about 40 billion in mortgage-backed securities. It's basically dumping 120 billion into the market one way or the other every month in their quantitative easing. And they're gonna have to stop. Inflation's getting out of control, lots of problems. And when they do, the market's not gonna like it. Does that mean, oh my gosh, the market's not gonna like it. I've gotta start selling. Uh, I, I've, I've gotta anticipate what the Fed's gonna do. No, you don't have to do that. Let the Fed do what it's gonna do. Watch the market and see how it reacts to the Fed. If it reacts to the Fed negatively, have your stops in place. Have your strategies in place of what happens when the market begins to roll over. Wait and let the market tell you how to interpret the news of the day. Don't you interpret the news of the day. You're guessing. The market will tell you exactly how it is interpreting the news of the day. Every second of the day, the trading day, you know where the market is. You don't think so? about how strong, how important the Fed is. Think about what would happen to the stock market if and when the Fed stops dumping 120 billion a month into the economy and market. Think about that. So the Fed has a lot to do about the market. The market is really Fed driven. It's not earnings per share driven. I know you can listen to Squawk Box and it tells you it's all earnings per share, earnings per share. It's not. It's how liquid the, the market is and where the money's coming from to buy. And that's what drives it. And right now, the driver is the Fed. Shouldn't be. The Fed should not be in that position, but it is. The market is addicted to free money and will likely have severe withdrawal symptoms when the money supply is cut off. They may say something today or tomorrow. You know, they're meeting this week about what they're going to do. Could be the market will react negatively to it. Am I sitting here worrying about twisting my, my hands about, oh, my gosh, What's the Fed going to do? Do I need to be prepared for that? No. Nope. I just wait and see how the market reacts. And then I react to the market. The fourth quarter of 2021. This is a big time guess on my part. So I'm just going to tell you where I think it is. Inflation is surging, but consumers have money they didn't spend during COVID. The supply chain is broken. Products are getting scarce. The consumers expect this and are buying ahead of the holidays. Manufacturers are raising prices due to scarcity of raw products but they're passing the cost right on to retailers. And the retailers are passing those prices right on to the consumer, okay? And the consumer's paying it. We don't like it, but we're paying it, okay? And so there's the, the, the in that regard, the bottom line is earnings per share will continue to be strong. And if the Fed doesn't kill the, um, the bull market, the fourth quarter for public companies is probably gonna be strong and the market ends on a strong note for the year. That's kind of how I see things going. Next year, probably a different story, but I think the fall is gonna be pretty good. And I could be dead wrong. Got that? I could be dead wrong. And if, but here's the thing, it doesn't matter. I can be right or wrong, that's a guess. You don't invest because of that. I put this up here to tell you that you can think about all those things, but they don't matter. You've gotta wait and see what the market does. If you know when to have a bullish, bearish, or neutral investment bias, it doesn't matter. If you are only bullish in bull markets, bearish in bear markets, and in cash and transition markets, it doesn't matter. What, what the Fed's going to do, what the economy's going to do, what China's going to do, what uh, the politics in Washington are going to do. Okay? If you know the current trend in the market will continue exactly until it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And that's it, that, those are not guesses. The market will continue on its current trend until it doesn't. That's a fact. If you know how to measure when the doesn't has occurred, 
not when it will occur, when it has occurred. It doesn't matter what the news of the day or the week or what the Fed does or what uh, Washington does, it doesn't matter. You wanna watch those trends. If you're willing to let the market tell you where it is, if you quit trying to guess where the market will be in the future, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of throw this into your head. Do you still think buy and hold is a good strategy? You probably do. There's a lot of folks who, who believe in it, but here's the thing. Buy and hold does work under the following conditions. One, you're gonna live forever. Two, you never need the money. Three, you don't mind losing 50 to 70% from time to time. If all three of those are, are true in your world, buy and hold works. But that's the only time it does. If you want more information, uh, contact us at, um, there's the 800 number, and you can email us at info at turnercapitalinvestments.com. Go to the website, click on start a dialogue, get my free weekly newsletter, go to turnercapital.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, and simply sign up. Uh, if you fill out the start a dialogue, uh, we'll give you a call and we'll talk about where you are financially and answer any of your questions. But here's one last slide where the market is right now. Okay. So we're going to spend a little time on this slide. Here's the 200 day moving average. When the market was booming higher and began to fall right here, that was in September, it crossed what we call an early warning trend line. And that's when we stopped buying and we are, we've got stops in place that are beginning to fire. Once the market drops down to this trend reversal warning line, then we know that we definitely need to be getting out of the market because it's on its way at that point at that point, it's, it's on a trend to go to the 200 day. If it crosses the 200 day, we move into inverse ETFs. So right here in this area, we wanna be in cash. And we were, and we did. But the market didn't keep on going. It came back up, crossed that trend reversal warning line. Big deal. That means that a lot of the pressure of it going lower is now off, okay? Uh, when, you, when it crossed the uh, early warning, it kept going higher. And, and right in here, we began buying, okay? And now we're 100% in the market. And we're gonna stay that way as long as this trend will continue. And how long will that trend continue? Until it doesn't. Right now, one standard deviation, that's the width of this line, if you take a vertical, Look at this line uh, between here and here is one standard deviation it is running about 5.13%. Uh, when the market gets to uh, roughly uh, 3.75 uh, standard deviations above the 200 day, it becomes overbought. And that's 1.66 standard deviation. So you take 1.66 times 5.13 and if the market moves that high above the, the, uh, the 200 day, it is overbought. When it's overbought, what do we do? We begin tightening stops. How do we tighten stops? We go from a two EM stop to a one EM. If it continues to move up, we go from a one EM to a half of an EM, half of a standard deviation. If it keeps going up, we raise that to a quarter of one standard deviation. Why? The market's booming higher. Why would we do that? Markets, uh, stocks, uh, sectors, ETFs, they will all revert to a mean at some point. You can't just assume that it's always gonna go higher. I know Tesla looks like it's gonna violate that rule, but it doesn't. Tesla goes up and it'll go down, okay? And so you've got to be ready. Just like back here, this point, when it got, more than 3.75 above the 200 day, which it did right here. We tightened stops, the market wiggled down a little bit. We went to cash, the market crashed. My clients were sitting in cash. Think about that. And then right here, we started getting back in. Why? Because the market began 
moving back up and, and negated that loss right in there. And it was, be, it was beginning to establish a trend. Did we go all in? We did not. We legged in. We were not all in until we got about here. So we went from uh, zero being in right here to being all in by the time we got to that area there. And so that's all a part of the strategy that we use. Another thing we look at is the histogram of the, of the total market. When it's above uh, zero and trending higher, that's extremely bullish. And I don't have time in this session to teach you the, the vagaries of how we go about making decisions. But we have a chart like this on every stock and on every sector and on every index. We know, and, and uh, talking about this uh, uh, histogram here, MACD histogram, and uh, we like to look at how that's moving with regard to the total market. Because the way we start the, the whole process of, of making money for our clients is initially to have a bias on our investment strategy. Are we bullish, strongly bullish, mildly bullish? What, are, we re, are we bullish or not? Are we bearish or not? Are we strongly bearish or not? If we're not in w one of those two camps, we have to be in neutral. And what do you do when you're in neutral? That's a transition period. We go to cash. So my clients know that. If we go to cash, they know it's because risk has gotten too high. Why go to cash? Because we don't know at that point whether the market is going to turn around and go higher or continue going lower. And so we either, when the market's going up, we have that issue to deal with. When it's going down, we have that issue to deal with. But we do know by how it's setting on this chart that you're looking at, that there is a world of difference between this trend here and this trend here. Okay, this trend here as opposed to this trend here. Okay? And so we look at those and they tell us whether to be bullish, bearish, or neutral. Okay, so I uh, think I've got maybe a few minutes left. Uh, Rena, do we have, um, do I have any time left and do we have any questions? Hi, Mike, we're actually a little bit over, which is fine. Um, and there are a bunch of questions. Um, rather than okay. you know picking one and not answering the others, uh, there is a link in our chat that Tom has been posting to join Mike for a Zoom call directly after this presentation. I think it'd be best if all the attendees joined you there. What do you think? Yeah, that'd be great. So just go to our uh, Zoom link and uh, Tom's already there and I'll join you here in a minute or two and answer your questions. Thank you, Rena. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Have a great day. Okay. You bet. Or Tom, Bye -bye. Mike. It's all right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And Bye -bye. thanks, Tom, for being in the chat. <laughs> All right, everyone. And as we mentioned, there is a link in the chat. Uh, Tom has been posting it this whole session. If you want to click that, you can join Mike Turner to have all of your questions answered and learn a little bit more about Turner Capital Investments. So thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the show.